going on, everybody? Here's the part three of my story and disappointments and all that stuff. You know, however you guys want to call it. You know, basically all my life, I have not been appreciated. Not even by my own family. You know, I remember... When I started wrestling when I was nine, you know, uh, my grandmother was the only one that supported me by that time. Um, I came to her and I said, hey, you know, um, grandma, you know, I, I going to become a, a wrestler, you know, a backyard wrestler. And she said, for real? Yeah. You know, she said, you know, she, you know, she uh, supported me and I'm. You know, she came to see me every show, you know, that I had. I remember we was wrestling on top of uh, mattresses by that time. And, um, yeah, you know, it was just basically, you know, like, I only have support of my grandmother. But when it came to my dad, when it came to my uncles, when it came to my family, the rest of my family, they think it was, I was a joke. And, you know, they, they laugh at me and they, they criticize me. They... Oh, you know, you you too young, you too old for that, yada yada yada, and it was just, it was, it was crazy that, you know, because for me, you know, back in wrestling for me, it was always like a, how you call that? It was, it was, it was therapy for me. It was definitely was uh, for me it was therapy for me because when I um. When I was, you know, in Puerto Rico, I was in school. I was always being bullied, being co names. Um, so it was like basically, you know, I was always angry. I was always pissed off. I was depressed. And, you know, for me, backyard wrestling, it was, it was therapy. It was therapy for me because every time I put somebody to a table or something like that, it was like a relief, you know, like, you know, I was letting my anger out, you know, but even when I, when I started as a kid, you know, a lot of people was laughing at me, you know, uh, cause I was nasty to K by the time I was. Boricua Junior. I was. I used to wear a mask. Um, and still, you know, was not appreciated for everything that I did. And and I was the in um at in Puerto Rico. Um, I was the. I was. How, how can I say this? I was the guy that did the most. I was the guy that was, you know, it was, it was the first to show in the, you know, uh, t- the first one to be in the show and the last one to leave. I was the one that was doing my best. I was the one that was jumping from houses and, and then jumping. I was a daredevil, you know, um, getting hurt, bleeding. And I didn't care because, I was doing it not only for me, but I was doing it for for the fans. And it came to a part that one time I jumped off from a house and I almost broke my two legs. Into into this day, I got problems with my legs. I do. Um, <clears throat> didn't wrestle for two months because I was in the hospital for like two months. Came came back to wrestle. That's the same day when I came back to wrestle, I became the Puerto Rican champion for the second time. And even even when the wrestling started, I was the first Puerto Rican champion. The first one. Still, people did not appreciate me. Still took me like a joke. When I created C2K when I was 16, I'm thinking, okay, you know, maybe going to the evil side, going to the dark side, I was 
Um, <clears throat> I let my hair grow and got skinnier because I was overweight. When I was nine years old, I was overweight. And I was thinking, well, maybe because I'm overweight, people don't take me seriously. When I was 16, I lost a lot of weight. I, I from 300 pounds, <clears throat> I went down to 140. And I was like, you know, okay, you know, maybe changing to a new character, take the cake, um, covers to kill, wearing all black, acting like I was Kane and Undertaker, and maybe people would take me seriously. <clears throat> By that time, I didn't wear a face paint. By that time. But nothing. People started laughing at me and calling me all kind of names and booing me and I was still was the good guy. But I still wrestled. I still did what I had to do. I became the first uh, tag team champion in Puerto Rico. The first one. Even when I came to Rochester, New York, starting CWE, like I, <clears throat> like I said in, in the second part, you know, I was still was having problems with the wrestlers, and he always with always with the wrestlers. You know, at first I was having problems with the fans, but over the years, now the fans love me. <clears throat> they do. The, my fans support me. They love me. You know, they want to be back. But it, my issue is with the wrestlers. I don't know why. That's my issues. It's with them. Not, oh, you know, you're not a legend. Oh, but when they see The Rock, when they see Matic, oh, yeah, let's, oh, Matic is the best. Rock is the best. I'm not okay, but where is he to carry? I agree with you. They are the best. <clears throat> but what about me? What about C2K covers to kill? I put 28 years of my life. Blood, sweat, and tears. Not only for the fans, for all of you guys. I brought, I brought many people to back your wrestling. My little brother, Dad Scorpion. Antonio Lashanga Jackson. Mike Coons. I even created the Backyard Wrestling crossover. And let me tell you something. If I didn't create the Backyard Wrestling crossover with my friend Gunshot, um, <clears throat> KDW would have never, <clears throat> and I repeat, KDW would have never, <clears throat> sorry guys, <clears throat> I apologize. KDW would have never made it to TBW. You know who made that happen? Me. I was the one that made that happen. And it, it made history to make the first crossover in backyard wrestling history. Anthony Steele. I know you guys know about Anthony Steele. You know who put him on TBW? Me. But still, I feel like I'm not appreciated of everything that I do. People, uh, people still put C2K on the ground.
Even there's people that name themselves after me. The rapper C2K. I know you guys heard about him. There's, there's, there's even a, a, a basketball team. Little kids of a, a basketball team named after me. But no, people don't appreciate that. Oh no, C2K, no. C2K is a liar. C2K is a nobody. They see the rock. They see Matic. Oh yeah, rock and Matic. Whoa, wow, woo. What about C2K? You know, I, for the 28 years, I changed my character many times, recreated myself many times. And it's like, yo, what, what else they want? I did everything that I can. At first, I thought it was me. I thought I was the problem. I thought, oh, maybe it was me. Many times I wanted to quit. But I think my brother's Matic in the rock. They say, no, don't quit, bro. This is this is your drink. Keep going. There's a lot of people who say, no. I, I even try to commit suicide many times. Because I went through many depressions in my life. Due to backyard wrestling. People not appreciating me. People putting me down. And I committed, I almost committed suicide many times. Because I couldn't do it anymore. I was done. Especially when I came back on RUW 2.0 and faced Day John. People are still talking about that match. But they talk about Day Young. They don't talk about it's okay. I still don't hear people talking about damn it's okay came back and still got it. Oh, Day Young did a great match with C2K. Oh, Day Young this, Day Young that. What about C2K? Come <clears throat> and then RUW 2.0. Even though I give them the best match with Day Young, do you think they book me the next time? No. I was asking them, yo, I'm back. Are you going to book me? Nothing. So I just didn't care. So I, I, there was a time that they was mentioning my name. Oh, why are you sick? Okay. You know, you know why? Because I didn't care anymore. I said, well, you guys are not going to book me. I'm not going to come. <clears throat> RSBW. You know <clears throat> RSBW. You want to know who helped JC Hardcore with RSBW? Me. And let me tell you something, guys, because I don't care what they say. It was my idea. RSBW was my idea. When I was general manager in RUW 2.0. JCR Core came to me. And we both named RSBW. What did he do? He took the credit. Oh, fuck it, okay. But it's still going on. Why? Because of me. Still not appreciated. They went all. You know, and I was supposed to wrestle at July 12th. Oh, no, something happened or something came up. You know why? Because they don't appreciate it, okay? All right, guys. Um, this is all I have to say. Thank you for guys listening. I love you. I love you all. C2K fans, I always will love you. Um, stay tuned for more or C2K Confidential. Love you all. Have a great day.